In this video, we'll try to understand what are outliers and what are uh, high leverage points. Uh, high leverage observations are different from outliers and the influence of outliers and high leverage points could be same or different. We'll try to understand the difference. We'll understand what outliers and high leverage points are and uh, what is the basic difference between the two. So we have got two regression plots and uh, using these two plots we'll try to understand. So here is a regression plot between y and x. So y being the dependent variable uh, or the target variable and x is the uh, independent variable. And let's assume we have only one independent variable for, uh, for our convenience. Uh, of course, this can will be extended to a multi, uh, multiple regression case where uh, you have you know a more than one number of um, independent variables all right so here is the plot okay regression plot that passes through the data points now you can clearly see there is no outliers uh, and the reason is all the data points are following the same uh, trend so what uh, defines uh, an outlier is that the data point if a particular data point doesn't follow the trend, the general trend in the data, then we call that as a uh, outlier. But here in this case, you can see all the data points are very much following the trend. So none of them are the outliers. But if you look at the second regression plot, uh, this data point can be called as an outlier because it doesn't follow the general trend in the data. The general trend in the data can well be uh, seen here. If you, uh, you know, just see all the other data points, they're following one type of trend. And this data point, the one that I have marked in red, is following a different trend. Or it has a totally different uh, value altogether from the rest of the observations. We call that as an outlier. So this is an outlier and rest all observations are the normal observations. So how do we define outliers? Well, outliers are always there with y variable. And that's one of the important thing to remember that the y data. Now remember here, if you actually take the x value, it is very much within uh, the range, right? We have x starting here and it falls over here. But the y value is actually, uh, you know, very high for a given x value, right? So at a given x value x1, let's for instance, y value should not be this large. It should be somewhere here, added ideally, in order for the observation to follow this trend. But it is quite high. So what it results is that there is a high error term, and all we are trying to do while fitting a regression line is to minimize the error. So if you take the perpendicular from here, this is your error right this is your error and that's what we are trying to minimize and given that there is a very large error in this case then the model will not be very good because a model with very large error um, or the error sum of square or residual sum of square or anything that you uh, find you know at the end of the model fit is not going to be a good one we always want to minimize the error and this will inflate the error and that's why outlier is an issue and we'll talk about it how to how do we deal with outliers in little more detail in the next slide so first we understand that it is always associated with y not with x and that's an important thing to remember uh, and y data that doesn't follow the general trend can be uh, called as an outlier and that should ideally be clearly dealt with if it has a high influence on your regression uh, results all right so so what is uh, a leverage uh, high leverage data uh, data or observation well uh, i've got uh, another example so the exa in, the ex in this particular example you can see that most of the observations are following the train uh, as well as the red one. This one also follows the same trend, right? You can see it's an upward trend and it's lying very much, uh, you know, within, um, very much within the trend. So that's uh, perfect. 
So there is nothing wrong with this data. So this is not an outlier. No, not an outlier. Okay. However, you can see the x value is quite large. It's quite large. Right. So x value lies between this one, x1 let's say, and then x2. Okay. But here you can see the x value is quite large here. And uh, that seems to be an extreme value. Although the y value is very much within the train. If you actually extrapolate the data, so you will have many data points over here. And you know you can see clearly in the visual plot that it's very much lying on the uh, same trend that the other data points follow. Uh, uh, whereas the value of x is quite high. And that's why uh, it's called an um, high leverage point and not an outlier. So the difference is uh, outlier is associated with uh, y variable or dependent variable whereas uh, leverage data points are associated with the x value. Now we are seeing only with uh, one independent variable this can well be extended to multiple independent variable but that will be a little more complicated because we will not be able to plot uh, in more than one independent variable in a two dimension so that will be difficult but in a multiple dimension uh, we can actually uh, you know use the same concept the concept remains the same except the fact that you know we just cannot plot it uh, in a 2d uh, plane okay so this is uh, a leverage okay so now we understood what is the basic difference between outlier and uh, a leverage data point now here is the third example where you know this is uh, a data point that is not following the train you can see right uh, so here you can see that all the data points are following this trend so there is a clear regression line like this but this data point the one that i have marked in red is very much away from it so the y variable the y value y value is quite small compared to you know what it should be actually right it should be somewhere here right other uh, so instead of that it is quite low so it is very uh, at a very distance from all other data points so if you um, draw a perpendicular line and measure the distance you will find this one as the error so it has a large error in this case and that's why it's an outlier. Now, is it um, a leverage point as well? Well, it's also a leverage data point because the x value is also an extreme. Uh, although uh, this point should have been taken somewhere here, so that's my mistake when I, you know, I was drawing the, uh, you know, this plot. But this should have been somewhere here. In here, it it cannot be said as. Uh, uh, a leverage data point it is only an outlier but if it is somewhere here where the x value is also quite high so x value is quite high and the y value is also extreme both x and y are extremes then it's not just an outlier it's also a leverage data point so i hope this is now clear the difference between outlier and a leverage uh, data point now how does this affect a regression line when you're doing um, you are building a model for uh, inference or for predictions. How is this going to affect your regression uh, output? Okay, so it is going to affect both this, uh, whether it's leverage or it's uh, outlier data point. It's going to affect your regression line adversely. So you are going to uh, get bad result because of presence of this data, and that's exactly why. You are always uh, recommended that you always check the leverage and the outliers before even starting your model. But a lot of times, even after you know doing the due diligence or the scrutiny, you won't be able to find out uh, outliers and leverage data points a priori. So you do that uh, while building the model, and we'll see how we can deal with leverage and outliers. Oftentimes, we are we are told that all outliers are bad and you should uh, therefore remove them from the 
data point before doing modeling. Now that is okay, but many a times it is not possible to remove outliers or leverage data points. There are many reasons. One is you have only small data set. So if you remove data points, your degree of freedom will go down and that is not a good thing for estimation. Right? With small data, you won't get good results. So having sufficient data points, always good. Sometimes you will have many outliers. That would also uh, be an issue because if you remove all the outliers, uh, you cannot have a good uh, you know, data set for estimation. So that's one reason. Second reason is that sometimes although they, you know, there is a presence of outliers, it is not going to affect your model. And we'll see one such case where you know there is not much of influence on your uh, regression result. Uh, and it's uh, okay to have the outliers in the data even while you're doing the estimation. All right. So how do we measure uh, the impact of the adverse impact of leverage and outliers? So we measure by what is known as influence. And there are many influence statistics uh, in, 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 in place. So you can use a number of influence statistics. Uh, and if you're using SAS or R or SPSS, if you, uh, you know, uh, explicitly mention uh, to get influence statistics while doing the regression, you will get uh, the uh, influence statistics in your regression output, and thereby uh, you can um, you know analyze the influence statistics and deal with uh, leverage and outlier data points. Okay, so here is an example where we have. Uh, build two regression model, one with the outliers and one without the outliers. There are two outliers here. This is the one and this is the one. These two data points are not following the general trend in the data, what the most of the data points are following. Now the red line is the one which is with the outliers and the this you know this blue line, the dark blue line is the one, the dotted one is the one uh, after removing the outliers okay uh, okay i'm 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 saying the, uh, the exact opposite i'm sorry so the dotted blue line is the one with uh, with the outliers and the red line uh, is the one uh, which is without the outliers now you can see that uh, the regression lines are completely different that looks completely different with different slope right so here the slope is somewhat different from what the first one. So this is let's say regression line 1 and regression line 2. So L1 is different from L2. That's what we it looks. Okay. But it may not be the same. For instance, the first regression line let's say is y1 equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. Uh, sorry. So this is. And then this is y equal to beta naught dash plus beta 1 dash x. Now we need to understand that whether beta naught is different from beta naught dash and beta 1 is different from beta 1 dash. So how do we um, get to know it? By doing a hypothesis test. If you do a hypothesis test and see if beta 1 is equal to uh, beta naught g uh, beta naught dash or not and you know otherwise you can see beta naught minus beta naught dash is equal to zero or otherwise. So we just have to do a, hypoth uh, a hypothesis test to know if there is a difference. Similarly you can do with beta 1 as well. If you are uh, very concerned about um, the marginal effect through x so you want to know how much change in x actually impact the change in y then you will be very concerned about uh, beta 1, right? So in that case, you will be looking at something like beta 1 minus beta 1 dash equal to 0 or otherwise. If it is equal to 0, if null hypothesis associated, then you can conclude that, you know, there is hardly any change in your regression output because of presence of outliers. In that case, there is no need to deal with outliers, okay? You can, you might as well keep the outliers while doing the estimations. There's no, uh, you know, great benefit by uh, removing them. Okay, so that's one way to deal with. Look at the second example. Here you can see that uh, the red line again is the one um, 
which is uh, you know without the outlier and the blue line is with the outlier okay so line number 2 is with the outliers and line number 1 is without the outlier now you can see there is a great difference now uh, you know you don't have to actually do a hypothesis test in this case because you can see that the slope is quite different on the first case the slope uh, are very similar for instance if the slope is point 7 let's say uh, for L1 and for L2 it points 72 they are very close and you might wonder whether they are different or, or, or the same and then you have to go to hypothesis testing but the second case it's very clear that the slope coefficients are very different right in that case you need not have to do an hypothesis test of course if you really want to be very sure about it you can go ahead doing that otherwise you know it actually says that there is quite a lot of difference between the output from uh, with the regression with the outliers and the without the outlier in that case it is important to remove the outliers uh, or use some sort of regression techniques that do not that doesn't get affected by outliers okay and one type of regression technique that doesn't get affected by uh, outliers is the um, you know the uh, the robust uh, estimation techniques or robust uh, what do you call robust regression techniques okay so that actually takes care of uh, uh, outliers okay um, or maybe you can also use different types different types of you know estimation procedure you may not use ordinary least square uh, procedure you might have to do something to do with something that you know gives different weight to different observation like you know weighted least square and so on where you know you have different weight to different data points in that case uh, the, the points which are outliers will not be given much of weight you know much of weight in the estimation so this will get very less weight uh, when you when you do uh, a weighted least square so that won't have much of an effect on the actual output so uh, so one thing one takeaway point from uh, you know this discussion is that not all uh, outliers or high leverage points are bad for regression uh, so all the times ensure that you calculate the influence statistics to check if there is at all a difference between uh, you know regression output with the outlier and without the outlier only then you can make a conclusion and then um, ensure that the model is robust enough uh, so so that's one important point to take away from these discussions thank you so much